first will be in James chapter 1, verse 2 through 8. James chapter 1, verse 2 through 8. will be if you want to just flip just a few pages over. We'll be in first Peter. First Peter one chapter one verse one through nine. We'll go ahead and mark those two places. Chapter 1, verse 2 through 8, where we'll start first. I was thinking before we get reading, I was thinking about this Bible that we believe in. Y'all heard me, you know, preach something like this before, and this, this message is going to be probably pretty short. This message is going to be real, uh, I like to use the word elementary. It's real, real simple. But I was thinking about this Bible that we believe in. And I was thinking uh, this week, all week, <clears throat> I've had these stories on my mind. and I want you to go, it, just, just get it on your thoughts just for a minute. I want you to begin to think about the big names and the big stories and the big events in this Bible. All the way back to the beginning. I'm talking about all the way back to Moses. And, uh, I, I want you to think about Noah. I want you to think about Daniel. I want you to think about you know all the stories, all the big events that took place in this Bible. And that's what I want to kind of talk to you about today, but I want you to think about the biggest events in the Bible that comes to your mind today. First, we'll go on and we'll read a little bit, but I want you to keep that in mind as you're reading today. I know uh, that we're living in hard times. We're living in hard carnal times, and we're living also in hard spiritual times. Amen, Trent. Uh, I realize that it's really hard right now. I won't say that it's hard to serve the Lord because I want to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I'll say that they're making it hard for us to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Satan would love to make it hard for us to serve the Lord right now right, in these man. last days. Exactly right. I, I, of course, and I keep saying this, if Satan knows that his time is running out, and Satan knows... You know, Satan's whole end game is to cause you to go to hell. Sometimes we overlook the obvious. Jesus wants us to make it to heaven. Satan does not. He wants us to fall. He wants us to give up. So what can we know to expect these things in the last days? I believe personally we're living in the last days. I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be next year. But I believe that we're living in the last days. Who knows that the last days begin when Jesus hung on the cross? That's right, Pastor. That's true. Yeah. That's when the last days started. That's, right, That's when it all started. When he hung on the cross and he was raised on the third day, and he came back and walked upon the earth and he said, It is finished. That is when the last days begin. So we are obviously living in the last days, but I believe that we're living in the last days that the Bible prophesied about, that the Bible warned us about, that the Bible talked to us and told us to watch for. Amen. Right, man. I believe it. But that being said, I want you to go to James. Chapter 1, verse 2. We'll start right there. It says, My brethren. Now listen who he's talking to. You always got to take this stuff in the context that it's, that it's being written in. Right. This doesn't go to everybody. This goes to us. This goes to God's people. When he says, my brethren, he's talking about us. He says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers, that means various, temptations. 
knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that she may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally. You know what that means? He's going to give it to you. If you ask for it, he'll give it to you. He'll give you probably more than you want. Amen. And upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Do you realize how stern that is right there, what he's saying? Do you realize that when you sit and you question the things that's going on, and you begin to question whether or not you should serve the Lord, whether or not this is all real, whether or not, do you, you get what I'm saying? When your mind gets clouded up, when you have to wonder if it's right to go to church or not, when you have to wonder if it's right to serve God or not, I know we're living in some uncertain times and we may not get to come to church next week. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you begin to wonder, when you begin to get away from from having faith in God because of the pains, the storms that are around you, he's saying, let that man not expect any good thing from God. Amen. Think about that. For let that not man not think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Amen. Amen Flip over with me. We're going to get somewhere in a minute. Flip over with me. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1 1 <clears throat> Peter chapter 1 verse 1 remember who Peter is right Peter was an apostle Peter an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bethphania. Elect, there he is. Who's he talking to again? The elect. Us, the bread. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you, Peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. What should our hope be in today? Our hope shouldn't be in this world our hope shouldn't be in the money of this world and what's going on with this world right now. But he's saying through the sprinkling of blood, through Jesus Christ, is where our hope should be. And he's telling us we ought to be lively because of that. Amen. Amen. Amen friend. I thought about it. If there's ever a time, you ever been in something hard, going through something hard, but you can kind of you know, if you couldn't see the end of what you was going through, you know, maybe even right back to when you was a kid, maybe a test or maybe something coming, you know, when you're a kid, you think a test is the worst thing it ever was. But do you remember all down through your life, if you, could, if you couldn't see the end of something, you, you just didn't have a whole lot of hope, did you? It's hard to get fired up. It's hard to get uh, lively about it. It's hard to find any hope or any good in it. But boy, when you got toward the end, nobody gives up a race when they can see the end, does it? I mean, if you can get right to the end of that thing, you can see the man holding the flag right there, getting ready to wave you down and say, you're finished. Boy, it'll get you lively, won't it? It'll get you a second win. Boy, you ever heard of a second win? A runner, as they go through that a lot, boy, they feel like they're going to die. They feel like that it's going to end. I can't go another step. And then all at once they'll get their second win. 
I remember going, you know, back in school when I used to run a lot, I would get that second wind. And I would say, all right, I can go a little bit farther. Amen. I can go a little bit farther. Jesus is our second wind. Thanks be to Come on, friend. He said, hey, right now we ought to be lively. Right now we ought to see the end approaching. Right now we ought to be getting happy. I thought about the day we come in and I thought I could see it on everybody's face and, and I understand and I know we're down and we're out and, we, and we're worried and everything's going on in the world and everybody, and everything is uncertain right now. But we know that that's going to happen in the end. We know that that's coming. The Bible told us to watch and to pray yeah, and to look for these things. So what does that tell you today? Let me tell you what that should tell you today. You should see Jesus standing there waving that chapter flag, waiting come on, on you, waving the green flag, saying, hey, yeah, this is on, your come. last life. Yeah, You're almost home. You're almost there. And in order to make us lively, in order to make us want to get up today, yeah, it's serve God, yeah, saying, hey, yeah, this thing is almost over. I'm almost home. And when I get home, I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Amen. We forget Amen. what we're looking for. Amen. We forget what we're striving for. We forget what we're fighting for, what we've been doing this for for so long. Right. I thought about the people who's quit lately. You know, I don't know who's quit, who says they have, who says they ain't, but I just know the ones that ain't here. And I just know the ones that ain't been here for a while. You know, my mind goes back to, you know, some that quit right before all this. Several of them. Who gave years of their life to this church? Years of their life. Brought their kids to Sunday school. Religiously, right here. And then when times got hard, they gave up. They forgot about their second win. They forgot about what they're striving for. Of course, there's going to be troubles. Of course there's going to be trials. Of course there's going to be challenges. Of course there's going to be hurt feelings. Of course there's people going to get mad at one another. Of course there's going to be troubles in the church. Of course there's going to be troubles in the world. Of course there's going to be troubles on the job. Of course there's going to be troubles in your home. Of course there's going to be trouble. Because Satan is trouble. And he wants to throw everything at you to make you quit today. Amen. And to make you give up. And we know it's coming. We read about it. We hear about it. It's preached. It's prophesied. And it has been for years. And yet people still fall into the trap. Amen. Today, we ought not see it as failure. Today, we ought not look at it as all the trouble around us. And, you know, the waves around us and the storms around us. We ought not look at it as a bad thing. But we ought to be looking at it as Jesus standing there waving a green flag saying one lap to go. One lap to go. And then when you get about halfway around your last lap, he lays that flag down and he picks up a checkered flag. He raises almost run. Amen. Amen. When we look at it and we see that caution flag. Amen. And we begin to get scared. We begin to get angry. We begin to lose faith. Again, a double-minded man is unstable in all these ways. Of course, when the bills ain't paid and it's time for the bills, guess what happens? Satan puts doubt in there. Amen. Caution flag comes out. Amen. How many would say, raise your hand and say today, you've seen Jesus pay bills? Yeah, Amen. That's right. How many did he pay them for who quit? <coughs> How many did he pay them for who gave up? Before, the, before they crossed the line. Amen. But how many did he pay them for when they kept running the race? How many homes you seen fixed? How many jobs you seen given? Come on, Amen. Right. How many, how many, how many, how many times have we seen God move? That's right, friend. Amen. Over and over again. Let me read. First Peter. Let's skip down to four. Verse 4. To an inheritance incorruptible un and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept, 
keep something means you keep it, right? Don't go nowhere, you don't lose it. See, God, He don't lose us by choice. We lose Him by choice. Amen? He says, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. You know what manifold means? Lester knows what a manifold is. You know you man in here know what a manifold is. It's when one it, it, it's when when everything comes, all kinds of lines come together as one. Amen. Like on a motor, you got an exhaust manifold. You got all those things coming out. And all next down to one. Amen. You know what manifold temptations are do to you? It kind of happens like this. Everything in the world happens at once. And it all comes to a head. It all comes to one. And you look around and you say, why even bother? Because I've got troubles on every side. I've got troubles all around me. This has made me mad. This has hurt my feelings. Well, this has happened. And this has happened. And all now I've got this going on. And it all comes down. It's all popped into one. And then you look up and you got all these troubles and it hits you one day when it all comes together. And you begin to ask yourself, why do I even bother? Amen. That's what manifold temptations are. Multiple temptations. Verse 7, but the trial, let's, let's read 6 again. Wherein you greatly, what did he tell us to do here? Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you're in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial, why? Here's your why. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise, unto honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What is he saying? Let's break this down a little bit. When everything comes against you, when that manifold, all those pipes pop down to one, and everything hits you at once. And you're looking, and you're tore up, and you're down, and you're out. Know that this is a trying of your faith. Know that, hey, all this was coming. All this has been told to you that it's coming. How many would sit here today and tell me that they didn't know these days were coming? That's good, Fred. That's right. You knew they were coming. We've read about it for years. We've studied it for years. We've prayed. We've read it in the Word of God and we knew we've heard it preached, we've heard it prophesied. I heard Perry Long back in the 90s prophesy a message, a uh, prophesy a prophecy right in his church, right here in this building, that said that we would eat from the palm of his hand. Yeah. Not Perry's hand, Jesus' hand. Good, Amen. Amen. We've heard about it. We knew these times was coming. And he says, hey, when you see these times coming, Though it's going to be hard for a while, rejoice right. and be glad. Because if you make it through it, if you come out on the other side, then you can rejoice greatly. At what? At the appearing of Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's right. Ain't that what we're trying to do? Ain't that what we've been in this for? Why are we surprised? Why are we letting it defeat us? Why are we letting it beat us down? When we knew that's what was coming, when we knew that's what we've been reading about, and we knew what the ultimate goal was, whose ultimate goal? Why are you here today? I'm here today to make heaven my home. That's what we're waiting on. That's what we're looking for. Why are we surprised that an enemy that hates us, hates God, hates everything about God, would not try to tear us down before we get there? That's right, Chris. I don't know about you, uh, anything I've ever done when I see that I'm getting ready to get defeated I don't give up 
He might know we know, but I don't give up very easy. I'll fight you to the end. I'll fight to the end. Even though I'm defeated, I'll fight to the end. I don't give up easy. Lester, when I say that it's about over, I'm going to give you one last shot. Amen. When I say that it's coming down to the end, I'm going to give you everything I've got. I'm going to try that much harder. I want to dig and I want to plead. Why would we not do that for God? Why would we not do that for heaven? Why would we not expect that the enemy's going to hit us with his best shot? And we need to hit him with our best shot. Amen. And our best shot is the hope and liveliness in Jesus Christ today. Amen. I thought about that. Well, let me finish reading this. It's tough today. But that's all right, man. We knew it was going to be tough. Who woke up knowing it was going to be probably going to be tough today? Yeah, amen, friend. But who woke up and said, I'm going anyway? Amen. 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 I'm here. Amen. You know why? I'm going to give him that last shot, Mark. I'd like to run right back like Jerry Collins. We can run around that field. I believe he runs around when he gets in the spirit. Well, that fist draws back just waiting on top of the devil right now. That's what I'm ready to do today. He ain't taking me out today. He ain't taking you out today because you're here today. Amen. Good. Amen. He got up with something and said, go fight another day. If it's hard or not, fight another day. Why? Because we can rejoice in his appearing. Let's put this in a real good perspective today. I'm not talking about nobody that ain't here. This is not gossip. I'm just saying it for what it is. I don't know who's quit. I don't know who's give up. Just who just ain't here. I don't know. Amen. I'm praying for them all alike. Because I, I was praying for them alike before they ever left. That's right. And even yeah. the ones that left before all this. But I'm going to tell you what. Right, let's put it in perspective today and let's look at it and just be real honest with ourselves. If the trumpet blows in the morning, or are you glad you was at Bledsoe today? Amen. Come on, Trev. That's right. If Amen. the trumpet blows in the morning, are you going to look at God and say, I never give up. I never let down. Yeah, I wasn't perfect. I didn't do everything right, God, but I served you to the end. Amen. I served you to the end. When everybody else was giving up, Lord, I served you to the end. Amen. Or what do you want to say? Well, yeah, I ain't been to church in a month or so. I ain't been to church in a year. Be honest. Be honest with yourself. Where would you want to be? I'm not I'm talking fair. about anybody. Not, not gossip. That's good, friend. Don't take it that way. I'm asking you today, where would you want to be? Are you glad you're here today? Hard or not, are you glad you're here today? Amen. Mask or not, are you glad you're here today? That's right. Amen. Fear or not, are you glad you're here today? Amen. Yeah, amen. I'm glad I'm here. If I'm laying in a pool of blood tomorrow on Straight Creek hitting the work, I'll be glad I was here today. Amen. Amen. If I'm at the hospital tomorrow, something's going wrong, I'll be glad I was here today. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're here today? Amen. Are you glad you don't give up? Amen. Are you glad that you didn't give up when somebody hurt you, Phil? Are you glad you didn't give up when somebody made you mad? Are you glad you didn't give up because the Spirit maybe don't move exactly how we want it to? Are you glad you're here today even though it's dry sometimes? Are you glad you're here today or not? Are you glad and will you be glad when God looks you dead in the eye. And you can't even lift your head up. And you're on your knees. Amen. And it's time for judgment. I'm glad I'm here today. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I've held on. I can rejoice and say, Lord, I haven't given, I haven't given up yet. I want to put this in perspective for you. I made a list. I ask you about this book that we read right here in the Bible. I asked you about it earlier. Right? I told you to think about the big events, the big stories. Times are hard right now, ain't they? Yeah, come on, friend. I could probably ask somebody in here 
if you're going through something in, in, in this pandemic and all this garbage, it probably wouldn't even be the top of your list. What's going wrong in your life right now? People's got other problems. You, you know why? Because Satan don't never let up. And when this is gone and the face mask come off, if they ever do, it'll just be something else. That's right. Correct. Because he's not going to give up on you. He wants you to burn with him in hell. Amen. He wants you to suffer with him in hell. Amen. You ever heard the old saying, misery loves company? He ain't going to be happy because he's there and he ain't going to be happy until he gets you there. That's right. But I ask you to think about these big events. Again, I'm going to get your mind wrapped around it just a bit. Think about the big events, the big miracles in this Word of God. Don't let me lose you. This is the meat of the message right here. This is where it's all at right here. How many is going through a little something right now? Amen. How many's got issues right now? You know, whether it be this, all this, and whether you've been down and out because of whatever it might be. Amen. We know that in the last days, what's he going to do? He's going to come out. He's going to come harder. But let me throw this at you. When you think about those big events, I begin to, as I, I, I prayed about this all week, and I got up this morning out of bed, I was thinking about all these things, and Lord, I was just like the Lord just got me up. Write them down. Write them down as they're coming to you. I got on up and I began to write these down. This Bible is made up of people who went through major trials. But this book is also made up of the major miracles which follow. Amen. Amen. What do you mean, preacher? Well, I wrote them down. If there was no Egypt, there was no book of Exodus. That's right, friend. Yeah. You know what the book of Exodus, you know what Exodus means? A great departure. If there's no Egypt, no if there's no evil, Pharaoh, right. if there's no bondage, slavery, that's right, friend. there's no Exodus. Take that part out of your Bible. How many great messages have you heard preached out of the book of Exodus? How many great faith stories have you heard come out of the book of Exodus? There'll be no great Red Sea crossing. No, that's right. There'll be no crossing the Red Sea on dry land. Take that out of the Bible. Take it out. It's gone. You see, what if they were to write a Bible about me and you? What if someday, I don't know, I'm not preaching this, I'm not saying this, that it's going to happen. But what if all this one day is gone? Everybody's gone. And they wrote a Bible about you. If your problems is gone, guess what? Your miracles is gone with you. Gone. That's right, okay. Amen. If your faith trying times is gone, guess what else is gone? The faith rewarding times that follow. That's right. Amen. I jotted it down. No Egypt, no Exodus. No Red Sea. No manna falling from heaven. Right, friend. No people walking around. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus that they walked around in their clothes. They didn't even get yeah, old. And their, and their right. shoes never wore out. And a stream of water followed them to take a drink from them. Right, friend. That's good. Amen. No, no Egypt. No Pharaoh, no problem. No promised land. Amen. Right. Amen. Let's go to the other one. No flood. No flood. No ark. No, that's right. No ark. No ark. Take it out. It's gone. Book of Exodus. No ark. Genesis. Gone. Get it out. Throw it out. Come on. Throw it out. Get rid of it. How many preachers has preached on Noah's Ark? Amen? No Jericho. You know what Jericho was? Biggest, baddest city in the land. Nobody messes with Jericho. God's people march around it and never fire a shot. The walls can't come to the land. No Jericho, no problem. 
Don't store you there. Take it out. Get rid of it. Take it out. This book's getting thinner. It's getting thinner. I'm about done. Y'all borrow with me. Come on, Trey. Doing good, Trey. Oh, Joseph. We preached on Joseph a while back. Yeah, wow. Joseph, his brother, Joseph, a good, a good man, a good young boy. His brother sold him into slavery. No slavery? We don't read how he rose up in Egypt to feed his family, feed his brethren, and feed yeah, his own dad. Came, that's right, Take that out of the Bible. See, no famine? No Joseph. No slavery? No Joseph. Amen? Take Amen. That. It's getting thinner, ain't it? Yeah. That Bible's getting thinner. Oh, this is a good one. No Daniel. No Daniel. No Daniel, no lines then. No miracle in the book of Daniel. Right, sir. You take it out. Yeah, Babylon, yeah. It's getting thinner. Yeah, Babylon, it's thinner. Thinner and thinner. No Hebrew children. No, no fiery furnace for them to face. No fiery furnace. No three Hebrews walking around in the fire saying there's a fourth down there. And it looks like the sun's moving. Take that miracle out. Take it out. Get rid of it. You see, in our lives we want the troubles gone. But just like our lives is just like their lives. You take out the problems. You take out the trials. Take out the faith building miracles that God puts with those trials. Let me read on. No famine. You remember when the famine went on and Elijah sat there by the brook and a raven would feed him three times a day? Yeah. Take it out. If we got our wishes, we would wish that our problems was gone, wouldn't we? Amen. When we should be wishing for the miracles that comes along with the problems. Let me read on, there's more. Oh, it gets deeper and deeper. No well, no Jonah. No Jonah. Amen. Book of Jonah. Swallowed by the well. Take the well out. You have no Jonah running to go preach no more. But because of the well, Jonah got busy, didn't he? Yeah, amen. And he went and preached on Yeah, that's right. Oh, this is getting good. I hope this is touching you all like it touched me. Oh, we'll pray for our problems to be gone. Well, let's pray for faith builders in our life. We know the problems is coming, don't we? The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And we know in the last days what's coming. Amen. What's coming? Even more. Right, yeah, so, so if we know it's coming and it's in the Word of God, there's no getting around it, are there? So what should we pray? Lord, I know I'm going to face things. But Lord, give me the faith to come through those things. Lord, I know hard times is coming, but Lord, let me rejoice through the hard times. Amen. Amen, Trent. No blinded eyes. Would be nice if there was no blinded eyes in the right. world, wouldn't it? Come on, Trent. But if there was no blinded eyes, we can take out the part that Jesus healed the blind. That's right. Trent. Cause the blind to see. Marty, that song you sung a while ago? No and boy. It ain't no good. Go tell somebody what the Lord has done. Without problems, there'd be nothing to tell that the Lord has done. Amen, Amen. friend. That's Amen. good. No blinded eyes, there ain't no Jesus to walk up and heal the blinded eyes. That's right, That's good. No death of Lazarus. Remember when Lazarus died and Mary and Martha's crying and everybody's crying and the whole, the whole place is upside down? Boy, that's a problem, ain't it? Yeah, keep bending. Boy, that's something to go through, ain't it? The death of your brother. The death of their friend. But Jesus came by when he started stinking. He raised him up. Amen. No death, no marriage. No death, no raising him from the dead. Take that story out. Do you see how thin this book's getting? Do you see where we're going with this? Oh, one of my favorite messages I ever preached. 
Not because I think I mean anything and because the message was so great. Because I feel like other people can preach so much better than me. But what I got to feel when I preached that message, Doug, or Blake, what I got to feel when I preached, silver and gold have I none. Such as I have, give I thee. Arise and walk. No way, man. No way, man. I'm trying. No hill. That story is gone. Trip. That message is gone. That story in this Bible is gone. Sir. Amen. Well, it goes on. No sin. No need for a Savior. Right, Chris. We look at our sin and we look at it as, as this terrible thing and, it, and, and we look at it and, we, and, and sometimes our own sin makes us want to give up. I can tell you without sin, there was no need for Jesus. We've all sinned and we've come short of his glory. Amen. No sin, no need. No need. See, sometimes it ain't the problems going on around us, but it's our own sin that makes us want to give up. Am I telling you to sin anyway? No, God forbids what the Word of God says. But ain't it good that when we sin, we have a Savior? Ain't it good? But if there was no sin, there'd be no need for the Savior. Amen, friend. It's good. Last and not least, what's the greatest, saddest problem you can think of in the whole Word of God? Amen. The most major event in the whole Word of God. It's by far, without even, even any kind of competition, no cross, no Jesus. No cross, no plan of salvation. Amen. The saddest thing that ever happened to any human in this world was when a perfect man. You see, we go through problems. And I'm sorry to tell you, I love y'all, but none of us is perfect. None of us is even close when compared to the only perfect man that ever walked on this earth. And if anybody in this world ever deserved not to go through troubles, it was that man. But he had to face the cross as a perfect man. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, as unjust as that seems, and it just don't seem fair. You ever get there where life just don't seem fair sometimes? As unfair as that was, as unfair as it seems in your life sometimes, put yourself in Jesus' shoes. A man who loved everybody. A man who never done wrong. Even while they were beating him, spitting on him. And now when the nails in his cross, he looked and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. The most unjust, the most unfair, the most horrible thing that could have ever happened in the history of man happened to a perfect man. But if there was no cross, there was no salvation. Let's rejoice in our troubles today. As hard as it may be, let's rejoice. When they beat Paul and Silas, I think it was, you boys correct me if I'm wrong, when they beat Paul and Silas, they went away rejoicing because they, they got to be like Jesus just a little bit. Amen, and they rejoiced saying, hey, we're like, we're like Christ. Hey, we got beat for preaching his word. We got beat just like he did. We're, we're just a little bit like him. That's right, that seems ludicrous, don't it? That seems crazy. But let's rejoice in our trials. Let's rejoice in our troubles. Knowing that at the end of all this, we can rejoice in His appearing. Amen. With no cross, with no problems, no miracles, no plan of salvation. Could you imagine how thin that book would be? That's only a few of them. Could you imagine how sad it would be to come to church and try to get you all lifted up 
without those problems and those miracles and that word right there. Could you imagine how mounted out you would be today if I didn't have these miracles to preach to you on a weekly and a basis? When me and Blake and Doug up here and preach, think about taking all those stories out. Boy, it would be a sad place, wouldn't it? But we can rejoice knowing that all these people, all these miracles right here, was follow the problems. There was a miracle that followed. Amen. Today, let's rejoice in these things and say, Lord, it's hard. But if I make it, I don't give up. I can rejoice that you're appearing. I love you today. We'll open the altar and let you pray. Let's play. All right, we'll let you pray today. I hope we do.